Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and welcome to my craft room. Thank y'all for joining me here today. We are making some holographic resin moons and what I'm doing here is I'm just going through and burnishing the inside of these silicone molds with this pigment that I got on Amazon. There's a link down in the video description and you can see just how cool that looks maybe if the camera will focus on it <laughs> but we do sell our molds uh if we're out of stock on our website be sure to sign up for our newsletter because we you know do shop updates every monday where we sell not just the uh, cabs that we make but also the molds and some craft along kits and all sorts of different stuff fused glass cabochons all sorts of different things that you can use in your crafting uh, that way you can craft along with us in our tutorials and stuff. But I'm just coming through. This is just an old, be beat up, blurry paintbrush. Sorry. And um, I am just really pressing it in there. Now, this was a pigment intended for nail art, so I don't mind getting it on my skin. But I do have a little cloth face mask on. Just because you don't want to breathe this stuff in. Normally I'd be wearing my heavy respirator that has like the filters on the front and stuff, but that's very difficult to talk through. So just for today, I'm taking it kind of easy. You can wear gloves if you don't want to be sparkling for the rest of the day, but I don't mind it a bit. Now, whenever you're applying your pigment, uh, you don't want to be stingy with it. Like, um, I actually prefer to be very heavy handed. And then, because I'm doing a whole bunch of molds at once, in that way, um, any excess that I have, I can just kind of carry over into the next mold. But you can see I'm just tapping the tip of my brush in, and then I start just burnishing it in. It, I have not gotten, like, it just looks gray with a little bit of maybe some rainbow sparkle if you mix this pigment in with the resin and then pour. I've found... Wait, it. don't take my word for it though if you want to try it out feel free to try it out the experimentation keeps life spicy so but uh, my own preference is I get a much better result with that true holographic um, by burnishing and so this one here I actually did with a little bit of another color shift pigment in my brush so you can kind of incorporate different mica powders and things in with this and you'll still get that holographic effect but with a little bit of an extra tint to it so i'm just gonna keep i'm doing a whole big batch for our shop update because these seemed to be really well received so just coming through and this can be used on any style of silicone mold um i haven't had as much success with um hard molds that i have to use like mold release on and stuff with resin casting though this does also burnish and then bake well on polymer clay as well so if you don't want to do resin pouring but if you're making something out of polymer clay and you want to add this really cool effect you can definitely uh do that as well again though it's burnishing it in really makes a big difference and on the polymer clay if you're burnishing it on after it's been baked I do recommend sealing uh, quite generously with maybe a Sculpey glaze or some Mod Podge or something of the sort that way you don't have to worry about it rubbing off as much here with the resin the pigment gets embedded into the resin so unless you're sanding it you don't really have to worry about it rubbing off And so just coming through, really making sure we're getting up into the tips on these molds. Now, also, this can work really well with whether you're using a UV resin. I actually really love, I, as much as I personally don't like to use UV resin just because of the smell, um, and I'm very bad about, like, curing it properly, um, if I were to use it, this is exactly the kind of project that I would use it on because there's not... A bunch of like pigment and additives and things blocking the light for it to cure because all of it's you know there on the bottom side 
Um, you could use UV resin, you could use, uh, I've done these using Art and Glow, which is one of my favorite resins for like, um, it takes, you know, 24 hours to cure, but it works really well. There's also a resin from Rio Grande. Rio Grande? Rio Grande? I don't know. Um, that works really, really well also. And it's a low VOC and like, um, it's their doming resin. Works really, really well. Very, uh, very inclined to like, it doesn't have a whole bunch of bubbles. But today I'm going to be using, uh, Smoothcast 325. It's a color match liquid plastic that cures in like 10 minutes <laughs> just because uh it's kind of chilly today and oh and there's a train <laughs> it's chilly but i've got the windows open because it's just such a beautiful day too um also i really like burnishing like this because it gets all the dog and cat fur out of the molds it's like cleaning and prepping the molds all at the same time um but it's pretty chilly and i found with my art and glow and art resin and a you know uh easy cast things like that if it's colder than like 70 degrees in my house um they have a hard time curing um like they just stay sticky and it's like they'll hold on to their bubbles more um whereas the smooth cast or yeah it's smooth cast it's by smooth on though uh, is the manufacturer. Um, it does perfect, even whenever it's cold. Like, it's been as cold as 50 degrees in my house, and it's still, because it has such a short reaction time, it heats right up um, with its own chemical reaction, and uh, I've had really good results with it, even in the cold. You might, if you're not doing a burnished design, get a little bit of, like, a blemish, like um, a blush there on the front. I call them birthmarks. Um, but whenever it's a burnished design like this, whenever you're taking, whether it's this pigment or a mica powder or something like that and burnishing the front, you don't get any, like, that's not going to show up. So very, very cool. So <laughs> the weather kind of affects the projects that I'm doing, but that's fine. It makes it fun and sort of seasonal. So that was our last one that I'm going to be prepping. I'm going to, I'm going to do like two more because this many of our moon molds, uh, uses two ounces of resin and that's kind of regardless of what brand you're using um, it's two fluid ounces uh, by um, like not weight but by like was that volume I don't know I just work here we also have up for sale on our website some of our dud molds um, because, well, I'm not very good at making molds, I'm going to be honest with you guys. And so we have them at an extreme discount. Our website is Back to Earth Creations at Yahoo, or no, that's our email. <laughs> it's just backtoearthcreations.com. But if you have any questions, you can send us a message at backtoearthcreations at yahoo.com. But yeah, it's, we need to get a pressure pot because sometimes I'll just get like bubbles and stuff and, you know, I'm learning. But I figure I can pass that, uh, the as I experience my learning curve and make mess ups, I can pass the savings on to y'all. Cause the only thing wrong with these molds is that it takes like a little bit more cleanup, which for cleanup, again, I highly recommend wearing a respirator. You never want to breathe resin dust, but I just use a craft knife, this one here, um, and like an emery board or sanding stick to kind of tidy up the edges on those. And I'll kind of show you how I do that um, after we get this cast. Now again, you can see I got quite a few of these molds prepped. So even though the product size that you get of this is quite small, it does go, a little does go a long way, but you don't want to be stingy with it. Um, unless you want to try that out and see what kind of effect that you get. So also, I'm just going to say, don't add India ink <laughs> to your uh, smooth cast smooth on resin the smooth cast 325 like foams up like this which is kind of cool but also not at all what I wanted to achieve but this is how the uh <laughs> the holographic moons turn out looking and y'all it looks exactly the same to my eyeball as what it does to my camera lens so this is not a filter it is not a trick of the eye that is straight up 
how it looks. So we also sell dud boxes where if you wanted to get your hands on some of our experimental disasters, um, we sell those on our website too. So let us grab a mixing cup and some stir sticks. Mixing cup, stir sticks. And I'm gonna glove up and change the camera angle so I'll be right back through the magic of editing. So, we are here, we are gloved up. I have our mixing cup, which we're only gonna be pouring two ounces, but it gives you lots of room to stir. And quite frankly, I couldn't find any measuring cups smaller than this. So, um, I'm going to start with part A. It's a smooth, ca smooth cast 325, giving it a bit of a swirl. I used this just maybe like an hour ago, so I'm not worried about like, uh, keep getting it like very mixed up. And I'm pouring, up to the one ounce line. Now in the past I have had success with adding like alcohol inks and different things like that. It's a little under. I'm gonna... Uh... Yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, you could also do this by weight because it says one what part one to part one by volume or uh, 115 parts to 100 parts by weight of blurry. There we go. Very cool. And also this doesn't make crystal clear castings. It's a clear amber casting, which I guess that's like, uh, it's a little bit murky and milky, but that's fine. And now I'm going to be coming through. This is the Carbon Black Pearl X pigment, and I'm using this instead of alcohol inks because, again, whenever it's kind of cold like this, I don't know if it's just me, but um, I'll oftentimes, it might get a little sticky for this particular resin. Like, Art & Glow doesn't mind the alcohol inks at all. It does great. So I've added in just like a bit, you know, the scientific uh, measurement of this carbon black. I'm very heavy handed with it because um, I want a very intense dark black for backing this. Like, actually, I would recommend Smoothcast has an onyx that's just a pitch of black. Um, that works perfectly for these because I think it shows up exceptionally well and I can actually show you um, this is one that I did with just a pale purple resin and that's how the holographic came out and then here is one that had a little bit more of a gray it was supposed to be black I'd added black India ink oh come on my camera has been giving me such a heck of a time here lately uh, with its autofocus. It's driving me bonkers. But you can see how your base color, even though they're both holographic, it can kind of affect your outcome. So that's something to kind of keep in mind. And I'm just going to stir and get that completely incorporated. And you want to do this before adding your second, uh, your part B, because man, it says it has like a three minute pop time. I don't know what world they live in, but it's like, it feels <laughs> like you've got to pour quick. So, um, I'm actually probably not going to be talking while I pour, um, just so that I can try to focus. Okay. So we've got that. Oh, and I'm going to try to get, I sure hope the camera focuses on this. If not, use your imagination, I suppose, <laughs> which is not what you want to be telling people in a tutorial. So up to... Being very careful because I don't want to overdo it. There we are. Setting this off to the side. And here I was saying I wasn't going to talk. And now I'm going to stir for... And this is always a tricky balance for me because it's... I want it to be very well incorporated. But if I spend too long stirring, that's eating into my very valuable pot time. And you'll actually be able to feel this start heating up in your hand. And I'm scraping all over the bottom. And I am getting the sides... All right, I think that's good. And now we're gonna come in. And I wanna be careful to not over pour in my molds, just because that makes for a little less cleanup. And you can hear my trash truck, <laughs> or the trash truck running outside. Which I'm just gonna say, it's kind of frustrating, because Randy got up at eight o'clock this morning to take the trash out after we stayed up till like three in the morning, uh, crafting, and it's like noon and they're just now running. But if we hadn't have gotten up to take the trash out to the curb, they would have run at like seven. You know what I mean?
just coming through. And I've tried mixing up smaller batches of this and I just didn't feel like I was getting an accurate um, mix. So that's why I do the two ounce batches. But again, you could be using whatever kind of resin that you like and be getting different results. So um, I'm not an authority on this by any measure. I'm just sharing my experience. And also it would really help if my table were level. But that's a battle for a different day. So if it's your first time casting resin, I don't know if I would recommend the smooth cast, just because you do have to be kind of quick about it. Like already it's becoming a little bit thick and viscous, and if it gets too thick, it's not going to settle into the tips and details of your mold. I, I realize I'm probably off of camera right now, but I'm just finishing up what's left in the cup and the extra couple of molds that I had prepped. Oh, just enough. Okay, now I'm going to go through and, while I still have time, I'm going to try to clean up because it is so much easier to break off thin flashing than it is to break off like super thick stuff. So this is why I wear my gloves especially too because, man, I'm like a, a sloppy mess. And that's why I feel pretty confident that if I can do this, y'all have got this because I am a sloppy disaster, y'all. And again, if I can do it, you certainly can do it and be very successful at it. So I'm just, just scraping across the top. This also kind of gets rid of some of the bubbles, which I don't mind a bit. Oh, this one's a little over full. And then, whoops. And if this were anything other than smooth cast, I could actually go through and whatever I'm scraping off now, I could just pour into another mold. How are they looking? Y'all see anything that's overflowed a bit? This one needs a smooth operator. Yeah. Oop. I don't know. Just to test it out. Okay, cool. So I'm going to leave this for about 30 minutes. It says it's set up in 10, but I find that whenever it's cold in the house like this, um, it'll still be a little like bendy, like gummy bear consistency. So I just leave it set for the 30. I go and do something else and then I'll come back and show you guys how we unmold them and tidy them up. Okay, so it is much later in the day. I got a little sidetracked, but our... Oh, wow. Our resin is completely set up now. And check out that hollow moon. Now, if you get any kind of little bits here... Again, I've got a cloth mask on. And I try to not do this typically over my molds, but... While your resin might still be a little bit soft, I kind of missed the window on that, but you want to come through and you can just tidy up very minimal. Oops, super difficult. Uh, you can just kind of scrape off any, and if you've got a little bit of rough here in the center, um, I like to come through with my craft knife and very gently, you can always come through and remove more material. But it gets kind of complicated if you take off too much. So you can just kind of trim off that flashing. And that is how they come out. So let's do another one. Let's do a rough one. Okay, this is one that we had scraped off because it was over full. And you can see here how the thinner flashing just peels. It kind of breaks right off. And that is so nice because it still gives us a nice finished edge the our resin shrank just a bit which i personally don't mind that if it bothers you or uh, you know if you buy a resin piece from somebody somewhere um and you don't like that it's very easy to fill in with more resin i personally really like this because if i were to let's say incorporate this piece into a polymer clay setting I don't like to bake my resin because you can get some warping and bubbling and stuff sometimes, but I could make the piece imprint this and 
this footprint that it leaves would give you a little bit more space to be able to like glue it in like it just I find it holds better than if it's like perfectly flat it's also very easy to just set it on some sandpaper and do like a figure eight to sand down the back evenly um so different ideas and details there also resin is very easy to kind of hand drill into if you wanted to set like a little eye pin or something um or if you wanted to use e6000 or even this is a perfect instance for perfect instance to use more resin or uv resin to secure like a pin back or something or like a glue on veil for some nice quick easy jewelry but that is how holographic moons can be made or any resin piece so i do hope that this was helpful to you guys if you have any questions comments or ideas please leave them down below i love hearing from you guys if you enjoy our free tutorials and would like to support the creation of more of them as well as participate in our behind the scenes content and exclusive coupons and stuff like that please consider joining our craft along club and again be sure to sign up for our newsletter it's free uh and you get like coupons and you'll be the first to know whenever we have a new tutorial or a shop update or anything like that so you can also kind of just go through and scrape with your fingernail <laughs> but boy gosh that's pretty you can see i'm rubbing it and i'm still shiny from earlier like i'm just very shiny from earlier but it's still it's not buffing off of the resin which i think is cool so yeah thanks for joining us again today to you guys and until next time happy crafting Mwah. Bye. <laughs>